Hey guys, Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here. And in this video, we're gonna actually go through and start implementing the interface. So we're gonna create a basic C++ class, C++ actor, give it the interface, and create a simple interact function. And I'll show you how to call it. Now this is gonna be the most basic example, and hopefully you should kind of get, a, I guess you could say get the gist of what you need to do once we're done. So to begin, as always, we create a normal C++ class, very simple. And if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see the Unreal interface. So let's select that, and I'll go ahead and make it public so it separates the uh, implementation. Yeah, just kind of keep things a little cleaner, and let's give it a name. So I guess let's call this one Tutorial. Inter no, let's actually give it a proper name. So Interact Interface, and let it do its thing. Alrighty, once that's all done, let's go ahead and open it on up. So we have basically two... Uh, files here. So as always, we have the .h and the .cpp. Now, in my case, I got to include more stuff into mine, so I got to do, for whatever reason, I guess the interface tutorial slash public slash interface or interact interface .h. I got to clean that up, but I'm not too worried about it. But in all fairness, you don't actually really need to bother with the .cpp. You really don't need to add in my opinion, functionality to it if you don't want to, unless you have functionality that it will be consistent in the function across anything or any class that you add that function to. So that's kind of the bare bones of it. So once we have our interface made, I'll cover what these two are here in a second. Let's go ahead and make our actor. So let's open that on up, create a new actor, and let's call this one, I don't know, um, box that moves up. Yeah, it didn't get more specific than that. Alrighty, now that that is done, let's go ahead and open it on up. So there we go. And there we go. So it's probably going to complain about the include once, you know, whatever the IntelliSense is called here picks up. Or maybe not. Okay, so we have our actor class now. Let's go back to our interface. Now, what are these two? So we have well, you can kind of get the idea of what you're supposed to do based on the comments, but this first one here, this class does not need to be modified. This is more or less to kind of check if a class implements the interface. Now, this can be used, well, this actually will be used when we do the blueprint stuff, but for now, we don't need to worry about it at all. You Actually, we're never actually going to modify this at all, period, but I'll show you what I mean later. Now, what is this class? Well, based on the comment, we add functions to this class, and this is class that will be inherited to implement this interface. So when we go to add, you know, inherit from it, such as when we do with it the pawn, so you can see here we use the i and then the interface name. Well, we have the i, then the interface name. So this is the class that you're going to make inherit, or you make your uh, class inherit from. So this is where we add all of our functions. Now, if you're familiar, you have to always make any function that you're going to override, potentially later, virtual. So we're just going to make a simple interact function. So virtual, void, we don't want to return anything. Interact. And that's really all you need. Uh, we're not going to have any default implementation, so I'm not going to worry with the CPP. And I'm just going to wrap the end with brackets, so that way it'll compile. Now, let's make our box that moves up inherit from this. So we have to include our interface. So we include, let's see, interfaces tutorial, public, interact interface. And now all we have to do is inherit from I interact interface. And that is all. It's really quite simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tick function and disable tick on this just to kind of get it out of the way. Whoops, open you, open you, open you, nailed it. All right, so now we want to override our function. So we call the function interact. Now, if your IntelliSense is actually working for once, if you type interact, you should have the option to basically override it. But basically all you would do is virtual void function name that you're overriding, such as interact, and then override it. So let's go ahead and create the implementation here. We're not gonna call that. And all we want to do right now is just print out a log. So UV log, log temp, warning, text. 
interacting with a box that moves up. Very simple. Now, the only thing that I want to do now is set up a simple way to actually be able to interact with it. So what we can do is a couple of different things, actually. We can, let's see, how do I want to do this? We could either, yeah, we'll just modify our actual blueprint character purely in blueprint. So third person, eh. Now let's make a very simple uh, line trace. So let's open up our character.h and we'll just make a blueprint callable function. I'll just give it the category of tutorial. And we're going to do void interact with uh, just interact with actor and give it the implementation. So we're basically just going to run a line trace that hits an actor and that's literally going to be it. So what we do here is going to be F. Well, actually, let's get our camera. We're going to do our camera. So F vector, we're going to get our camera's location. So start equals let's see get follow camera component location then f vector end equals start plus get follow camera component rotation if i can spell component right we want to turn that into a vector and then multiply that by the distance that we want to check so in our case i'll do I guess 500 won't be too far. And from here, we want to perform our line trace. And I also want to draw a debug line to make sure that we're, you know, having the proper line. So if get world line trace single by channel, it outputs to a F hit result. So hit result. And then we have our start and then our end. And let's see what else. Our trace channel. So I want to use the visibility. So ECC underscore visibility. And then our F collision query params, which I don't think I need to touch. So F collision query params. And then our, this one I think I do need to touch. F collision response params. So F collision response params. And params dot, nope, maybe it is the other one. So params dot add, yep, ignored actor this. So my bad, we're going to remove this guy and use our custom one. So we just wanted to ignore our characters that way, you know, when we perform the line trace, we don't want it to actually hit our character. And now I'm going to draw a debug line. So draw debug line takes in the world and then our start and our end. And then let's see, what's it color? So F color, we'll do red. Then we have persistent line, we'll do false, lifetime, we're going to leave it up there for three seconds. And then zero for depth priority and thickness, we'll also do, we'll just do two. Like that. So that way it draws a line for us to visually see. So I'm going to print a log and make sure that we actually hit it. So log dump, text, hit, and actor, percent S. And we're going to do, we'll dereference it, we're going to get the hit result dot get actor and get the actor's name so nothing's going to happen right now but with any luck anything that we press a key on this should print let's see what i miss oh right warning okay so that's just for our basic interaction so in your case you would already probably have this set up or be setting it up your own way now let's head to our third person character blueprint so we can call it. And I'm gonna do, just search for left mouse button and then change it to F. So that way when I press F, I wanna call that function. So we're gonna call interact with actor. Pile, and we're gonna save everything and let's try it. So we press F and there we go. And the line is not quite long enough. So let's bump this up to something like, I don't know, 800. That'll probably give us the right distance. All right, press F, and there we go. So we can go to the output log and dock it. So as you can see, hit an actor, hit an actor, hit an actor, and they're all different actors that we're hitting. So we need, it means everything's working. 
Okay, so we created the interface and we set up an actor and gave it the interface. Now, how do we interact or use that interface? Well, that's very simple. The one thing we want to do first also is going to be we want to include the interface. So let's go ahead and include uh, interface tutorial, public, and our interact interface. And in this case, because we don't have, you know, really any blueprint implementable stuff for the uh, interface, all we're going to do is just cast the hit actor to the interface class. And from there, we can simply call the function on it. So what we can do is if I interact interface, let's just call this one interact interface equals cast to I interact interface from hit result dot get actor. If that is valid, we just go from the interact interface and we call interact. And that's simple as it gets. So now nothing is going to fire because we don't have a cube or anything. So I can walk around, I can press F all I want, and nothing's going to happen because we don't have any actor in this scene that implements from the interface. So if you recall, we made that actor, so box that moves up. Let's create a blueprint version of it so we can go ahead and add a, uh, what you call it, a mesh to it. Should have just made this a static mesh actor. Oh, we're going to add a static mesh, make it the root, and let's just do this jam for cube. So we have that guy. Let's make sure the collision's fine. So we have block all dynamic, which means because remember we're using the visibility channel, so we want it to block. Now we can simply drag it out. And we'll just make it this floating one right here. So now when I press F on it, as you can see it says interacting oops, with box that moves up. And I've looked down and press it on anything else. Nothing happens until I go on this box. So that's how you can tell, and it'll call the actual interface. Now let's go ahead and just, you know, move it on up really quick. So we're just going to take our location. So F vector current location equals get actor location. Nail the spelling. Actor location. And then we're just going to increase the Z. So current location dot Z plus equals, uh, we'll just do 50. Then we're going to do set actor location, current location. And that'll make it so whenever we press F on it, the actor will raise up. So that way we can show multiple implementations. So I press F, it moves up. Very simple. Okay, so we now have an actor that we have given the interface. We gave it its own functionality, you know, we make it move up. And we're good to go. So now we can have several actors and they would all have their own unique implementations. And I'll show you that when we actually get into the next video. So we're gonna make a couple more of these. But really, if you wanted to have another actor that does something different, all you would have to do is make another class, make it inherit from the interface, make it override the interact function, and then you can add whatever you want inside of it, and it will perform it. You don't actually need to modify any of this code inside the interact with actor function, or your interact you know, whatever function you have at all. All you have to do is just make sure you call interact on it and it'll run its own implementation. So you might have one actor that moves up when you interact with it, one that moves down, one that moves left, right, one that, you know, deletes itself or something like that. And it all works in the same way because you're calling interact. So it kind of works as if it's a, you know, a base class because you're all inherit, all these classes are inheriting from the same base class or the same class. They just have their own implementations of the interact function. So that's going to wrap up this video. And in the next one, we're going to move on to make this stuff doable from Blueprint, which has its own ways that you actually call things. So we're going to be modifying this little section here and adding that logic actually directly inside of a random Blueprint actor that we create. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series and a Conquest game mode tutorial. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's linked down below as well. And I'll try to help you out. I really need to make an outro message. So adios.